Praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Apostle Rojas saying welcome this morning to our live streaming. We thank God for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are thankful this morning to come before you. We bring you greetings from the International Christian Center. And we are located at 1673 Dean Street in Brooklyn, New York. And we are coming to you from the Epic Center on New York City. And the state has the most uh, the most um, cases in the United States. And um, we are here at the Epic Center. We are here and um, the world have seen 1.2 million people tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, the death toll is about 65,000. In the United States alone, it's 312,000. New York City, 113,000. New York State, rather. And we have experienced the most death in uh, the United States. So we come before you. Uh, we're not um, denying what is happening. But this is a time where we uh, must trust in the Lord. And that's what I want to share with us today. About trusting in the Lord in difficult times. Or trusting in the Lord in a time of crisis. And um, we have to trust in him. Uh, I want you to hit the share button so that others can um, join in. You can share and um, they will join in with us. Today being the first, uh, the first Sunday in the month of April 2020, we would have been in church celebrating Palm Sunday. But because of the circumstances, we have to uh, be here today uh, from my home to share with you today. So we want you to be encouraged today. We want you to uh, hit the share button, invite a friend, let's have a watch party, and let's trust God as we come to you live. Amen. Um, I also want to give you a little update. Um, I want to thank God this morning. We want to give God the glory. We want to give God the honor. We want to give God the praise because of who he is. He is God all by himself. He woke us up this morning. Therefore, this is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Amen. And we certainly give God the glory and we give God a praise. We must praise him in these times. Amen. We thank God for all those that are coming on. God bless you this morning. Uh, Brother Lipton, God bless you. I know you're always checking on me and praying for me. My mother-in-law from Trinidad, God bless you. Uh, yes, uh, we thank God for all those that are uh, joining us live today uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we want to give you an update. Um, and I want to say that I thank God for the power of prayer for the folks that are praying for us. I receive prayer every day from different people, from Trinidad, from, from Louisiana. I receive prayer from Africa. And we thank God for prayer. The Bible says we must pray without ceasing and that we must pray always and so um the disciples came to jesus and they asked him master teach us how to pray not how to preach not how to work a miracle not how to do a seminar not how to fill the church teach us how to pray we we saw how you pray we saw the manifestation we saw the results and we, 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 we want you, we want you to teach us the art of praying so that we can get some awesome results. And I thank God for the spirit and the power of prayer. These are the times when people, the church, we are praying as never before. Because I believe that prayer changes things in Jesus name. Hallelujah. We want to give you an update. You know, it was uh, two weeks ago, two weeks ago when um, 
and my wife and I will get up not feeling well and like everything else um, uh, we went and get tested and she came up a positive and um, had fever and so forth and temperature 101-102 and um, from last week um, everything subsided no more fever no no more um, no, we never had respiratory problem never had to go to the hospital um, there and then the, 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 the pastors of the church they call a three day prayer and fast we prayed all week last week online and we are praying this week again and I want to thank God I want to thank God for the power of prayer you know when we tested I, I tested also um, negative but to be quite honest with you uh, we tested like Monday, Tuesday, the result came in on like Thursday and um, by Thursday, I mean, we were to get in the house and over last week and I felt all the symptoms, headache, sore throat, uh, the body feeling like uh, a lot of aches and pains. And now today I can also testify that I'm doing well, no temperature, no, 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 no fever. We, we just have a, a light cough, but, but more than likely uh, we are, we are recovered fully and we are healed by 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 the stripes of God and I want to give God the glory for that and I want to thank God for that you know as I speak we we know someone who who who, who knows someone who died or we know someone who tested positive and um it, it, it's everywhere in New York and and they said we haven't hit the apex yet so we are praying we are praying and believing God that God will come through for us so so my wife and I today, we are so, so grateful. I mean, people died. And um, whether it's 1% of people tested that die or 1.5% or 2%, America has 300 million people. 2% of 300 million people is 6 million. So we don't want to hear 1% or 2%. When it's 1% and it's your mother or your father or your grandmother, it's a different ball game. So we, we, we want to live and not die. We want this thing to go away in the name of the Lord. And so, and so I want to bring your attention to the scriptures today. We also want to remind you that we will be doing communion. Today being the first Sunday in the month of April 2020, we will be doing communion. I have my, uh, 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 I have my, my wine and I have my, uh, my crackers. I have my crackers. If you have bread, if you have juice, whatever you have, we want to take communion today, even though you might not, I might not be able to see you. But if we can do that communion, the blood of Jesus has power to save, power to cleanse, power to deliver. And when we take that communion, it will saturate our very being. Mm -hmm. We want it to go through our track, our throat system. We want, it to, we want it to saturate our very vein, our very being, and bring healing and bring deliverance in the name of Jesus. He says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And we believe the blood has power to heal, power to save, power to cleanse, and power to deliver. So I want you to get your bread and get your wine. If you don't have it, you don't have to go out and get it. God understand. Use some juice, whatever it is. But it's a powerful symbol. It's a powerful symbol. The bread symbolizes body and the wine his blood. And he shed his blood that you and I might live. So we want to join for communion in a few. Amen. So today I want to thank God for all the prayers of the saints. We give God the glory and we give God the praise. We are well and we are thankful for that in Jesus' name. Now I want to bring your attention to the scripture today. You know, um, I want to talk about two persons from the scripture. One, Job. As a matter of fact, we had our Sunday school this morning and we are talking about Job and how Job went through a difficult time in his life. And we also want to talk about one of the minor prophets by the name of Habakkuk. Um, what, what happened? Habakkuk, his name means embrace. And may I say, as we talk about embrace, the word of God says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 5, it says there's a time to embrace and there's a time to refrain from embracing. Now, today we would have been in church, Palm Sunday, with our palm in our hands and hugging and greeting. We have family church. We miss the assembling of ourselves together, but we have to refrain from embracing now so that we can embrace one another later. Now, the Bible said that there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. 
So let's be wise, ICC, and let's um, refrain from embracing now so we can embrace later because this is for a time, this is for a season. I believe in my hearts of hearts that this too shall pass in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we stand before you as a testimony. And I wish I could have taken some question and answers today to tell you what we did and how we feel. We, 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 we you know, everybody today seems to be a herbalist. Do this, drink this, do that. And, 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 and also people are asking the question, Pastor Apostle, what is God saying? What is God doing in these times? The universe, is the universe mad at us? Is Mother Earth angry? Is nature seeking vengeance? What's happening? And so Job, Job asked a question. As a matter of fact, he had a dialogue with God and Habakkuk had a dialogue with God because some things were happening that they did not understand. And I didn't come before you today that I say that I saw this coming or I knew all the answers or I know exactly what to do. Job and Habakkuk was facing these experience. And here what um, Habakkuk went to God, he had a vision. And God told him, he said, I will use, I will use the Chaldeans from Babylon to invade Judah. He says, and I will use this wicked people. I mean, I will use this wicked people to invade Judah. And they will put a hurting on them, my Lord. And so he said, they were such vicious, cruel people. They said the horses was like chariots. The, they were, the eagles swooped down and devoured the prey. They, 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 they were fierce. They were warriors. And I will send them. And, and Habakkuk was like, but God, they are more evil than us. I don't get it. What are you doing? And they had a dialogue. And Habakkuk went on the watchtower. And he said, Lord, tell me what's going on. I, I, I am confused here. And you know, you know, you know, what's going on right now? What's going on? Good people are dying. Children are dying. Schools are closed. People are out of work. America, the strongest, richest country on planet Earth, has more cases than any other country in the world. And I often say, when 9-11 happened, we have crossed 9-11, the deaths in 9-11. I, 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 I think I said it last week. If somebody had bombed America, we have laser-guided missiles. We have the greatest submarines. We have the greatest stealth bombers and fighter jets in the world. The most skilled pilots in the world. We went and smoked the Taliban in, in Bora Bora in the, in the hills of Afghanistan. But how can we bomb this virus? It has us reeling. We are short on PPE. We, we, doctors are dying. Nurses are dying. It, it's chaotic. And, and we saying, where are you, God? Is this fear? What's happening here? And here Habakkuk was saying, God, you're using these cruel people to wipe us out. What are you doing? I don't understand what's going on here, Lord. And God spoke to Habakkuk. And you know what he told him? Can I read it for you? Hear what Habakkuk says. He said, I will climb. I will climb to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. Dear, I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. He had a dialogue. He almost had a, not in a disrespectful way, but he was arguing with God and saying, God, why? Why this coronavirus? A couple that was married for 51 years, they died six minutes apart. A mother died and left the six children. Their father had died recently. These are the kind of gut-wrenching stories that we are hearing. And we are saying, God, are you there? Are you going to come to our rescue? And here Habakkuk says, he says, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plain on tablets so that the runner can carry the correct message to others. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not delay. Oh yeah, even though it's hurry, it will surely come. And he went on to say, look at the proud. 
They trust in themselves. They live. Their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by faith. The just shall live by faith. That was the answer that God gave Habakkuk. Saying, you know what, man? In spite of all this, the just will have to live by faith. Remember, we live by faith. We walk by faith. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I was saying to those that are listening, whether you're in Trinidad or whether you're in Africa, the just shall live by faith. The Bible said without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. And it seemed like Habakkuk didn't get the answer that he was looking for. And I want to read something to you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. And when, when, when Habakkuk prayed to God God, God, God answered this way. Watch this. He said, the people, the Chaldeans from Babylon, that's going to invade Judah. Hear what he said. He said, they are notorious for their cruelty. This virus is cruel. It will destroy your lungs. You can't breathe. You suffocate and die. Hear what he said. They are notorious for their cruelty and do whatever they like. No vaccine, no cure. The horses are swifter than cheetahs and fiercer than wolves of the dust. The charioteers charge from afar like eagles. They scoop down and devour their prey. On they came, all bent on violence. My God, the horde has advanced like a desert wind, sweeping captives ahead of them like sand. They scoff at kings and princesses and scorn all their fortress. This was no joke. And Habakkuk as a prophet, this is a scripture that I want to bring for you today. Listen to this. Habakkuk got three chapters. As a matter of fact, the word Habakkuk means to embrace. And hear what Habakkuk says. In the end, when he expected the disaster coming. Hear what he says. Listen to me carefully. He said, I tremble inside Habakkuk 3 and 16. If you have a Bible, turn to it. Habakkuk, a prophet of God, one who dialogue, one who talk to God on behalf of the people. He said, I tremble inside. I'm reading from the NLT. He said, I tremble inside when I heard this. My lips quiver with fear. I was like shaking. My legs give way beneath me and I shook in terror. I waited quietly for the coming day. When disaster will strike the people who invade us. My God. And hear what it says. This is the point I want to drive home. Listen to this everybody. He said even though the fig tree shall not blossom. And there shall be no grape in the vines. Even though the olive crop fail and the field lie empty and barren. Even though the flock die in the field and the cattle bands are empty. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me a sure footed as a deer able to tread upon the heights. He makes my feet like hinds feet. So he is saying, though the fig tree shall not blossom, there is no grape in the vine, the olive shall cease, there is no uh, food in the field, uh, 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 the, the, the herd is cut off from the stall, there is no, no herd in the flock. He says, oh, will I rejoice, I will joy in the God of my salvation. So what do we do in a crisis? And you say, pastor, are you out of touch? People are dying. What are you saying? I should rejoice? Well, let me tell you something about the word of God. The Bible said the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I've got to stand on God's word. I've got to stand on his great, exceeding, precious promises. Because God cannot lie. 
And no matter what the situation, as a child of God, I say to you, you have to exercise your faith. You have to live by faith. The, the Lord will have a cup, the just, the just, I know it's coming. I know it's coming, but the just will have to live by faith. And Habakkuk had the presence of mind to say, you know what, God, even though the fig tree shall not blossom, even though the olive shall fail and there are no vine, no fruit in the vine, this sounds like a farming. The, 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 the land is desolate, the ground is parched, the, the rivers are dried up. This is a farming, man. They are being invaded. They are being overrun. What will you do? I will rejoice in the Lord. You know, we are not saying we are super spiritual. When we tested positive for this corona, I'm telling you, my wife and I, there was such a peace. I'm not faking it, my friends. God gave us a peace. He gave us a calm. You know, we trust God. We pray. We seek God. And today, we are free. We, we, look how I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you that I have, I have energy. No fever. No, no headache. You know, God is good. And God is good all the time. He woke you up this morning, not the alarm clock. And somebody give God, give God some praise. And you can't let the devil steal your joy. I know it's a tremendous time of pain and anguish. And you say, Pastor, Pastor, have you missed it? Uh, is this appropriate time to talk about rejoicing? Can you leave that for when, when the corona is passed so we can rejoice? Uh, no, 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 no. We're going to rejoice now. And we're going to thank God. And we're going to give him the glory. And we will express an attitude of gratitude. And we'll tell him thank you. The Bible said in everything, in everything. We're not thanking God for corona. But it says in everything, in this climate, in this season, we will still give God the glory. Hallelujah. We will still give God the praise. Glory to God. I want to share with you and I'm going to have communion. One more. One more. Joy. We're doing a teaching on Job right now. And, 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 and um, you know, when, when Job had this dialogue with, 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 with God and the devil and Satan, and, and he says, Job is only serving you for what you, what you, what you bless him with. If you move, if you, if you take what you, what you have. And, and I'm saying today, people are losing stuff. We, we're not working. We're not, we, and, and we are, even though the church is closed, the actual building, people are turning to God. People are turning to God in these times. I'm saying after Corona, will we still serve him? Will we forget him? Will we remember him? Will we still love him? Will we still serve him? We cannot use God as a light switch. When we want him, we put him on. And when we don't need him, we take him off. America, we need God. We need God. We need God. The Bible said righteousness shall exalt a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. But Job served God regardless of what God took from him. Hallelujah. And look what Job says. I like this. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. After Job had all the bad news about all his livestock being lost and so forth and so on, Job stood up and tore his robe in grief. He shaved his head, fell to the ground, and what he did? Habakkuk rejoiced in the time of farming. Isaac sowed in the time of farming, and God gave him a hundredfold. What do we do here? Do we panic? Do we run and hide? What do we do in this crisis? Do we turn on each other? My friend, these are the time for us to forgive, for us to love, for us to repent. You know what Job did? In his pain, in his trials, and in his tribulation, Job worshiped. Could somebody lift your hand right where you are in your house in spite of Corona, in spite of the bad news, in spite of what they're saying on CNN? Could somebody on the first Sunday of April 2020, Palm Sunday, could somebody lift your hand and give God some worship? Even though I'm not in the location of 1673 Dean Street in my living room, I can lift my hands and say, I worship you, Abba Father. 
Job shaved his head, fell on the ground, and he worshipped. Oh, hallelujah. I give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. All the name and the fame belongs to you. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Beside you, there is none other. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too difficult for God. With God, all things are possible. We serve a God that knows no limit. We serve a God that is mighty to save and strong to deliver. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. And let me continue. Hear what he says in Job chapter 120 and verse 21. Watch this. I came from my mother's womb and I will leave naked. When I leave, the Lord gave me what I had and the Lord has taken it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What Job did, he blessed God. The word bless here means to praise God. He praised God. He worshiped. And he, oh, praise and worship. Listen, praise and worship. Somebody worship God in your house. Hold the hands of your wife and worship God. Lift your hands and tell him thank you. How could Job have all this bad news and still fell to the ground, worship God and bless God? How could he bless God in these trying times? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to bless God right where you are. We're going to go into communion. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. He blessed God. He blessed God. What did he do? He blessed God. Let me give you another scripture from Job. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. God is good. God is good and God is good all the time. Hallelujah. You know what Job says? In chapter 15, I'm reading from the NLT. The King James Version says, Do he slay me, yet will I trust them. The NLT says, God might kill me, but I have no, I have no other hope. I am, I am going to argue my case with him. Hallelujah. And he says, Do he slay me, do he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will argue my case with God. But, 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 but do he slay me, yet will I trust him. Why? Because I know my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I read you one more thing? And I'm going to do communion and we're going to pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, I'm building up a sweat up in here. Glory to God. Sweating out that coronavirus in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, I want you to worship that coronavirus away. Worship it away in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Put on the garment of praise when the spirit of heaviness comes. Thank you, Jesus. So here we had Job, Job, and here we had Habakkuk. Habakkuk chose to rejoice in difficult times. Job chose to worship and bless God. And, and, and we didn't have all, you know, Amos 3 and 7 says, God, God reveals nothing but his secrets to his servants, the prophet. Now, there are so many prophets in the land. How come nobody saw it coming? Job, Job, Job was facing uncertain times. And he went to God because his, his wife told him to curse God and die. His friends told him that, 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 that Job, you must have done something wrong. Why are you going through this? And, and at one time, Job was baffled and he says, God, I need to have a talk with you. I need to have a dialogue with you. I need to, I need to complain to you. Listen to me, God. I, I wanna, I wanna settle something here. This, this, this people misunderstand me. They, they don't understand what I'm going through. They don't understand the season, the, the climate that I'm in. Can you bring some clarity, God? And hear what it says. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Job, chapter twenty-three. Hallelujah. Then Job spoke again. Job spoke. And here what he said. He said, my complaint today is still a bitter one. And I try hard not to groan aloud. Mm. People are groaning. Doctors and nurses are groaning. EMS workers, they are groaning. This ain't no joke. It's a serious time. 
Job said, if only I knew where to find God, I would go to his courts. Where are you, God? People are saying, God, if you're good and your mercy endure, why are you allowing this to hit the land? God, we, uh, what's happening here? Can you break it down? Then I would listen to his reply and understand what he says to me. Would he use his great power to argue with me? God is too wise and too infinite and too, too invincible. I don't know, God, if I could challenge you, if I could, if I, would you use your, your great power uh, to argue with me? No, he would give you, no, would he give me a fair hearing? God, would you listen up? Honest people can reason with him, so I, I would be forever acquitted by my judge. Hear what he said. He said, I go east, but he's not there. I go west, but I cannot find him. I do not see him in the north, for he is hidden. I look to the south, but he is concealed. Where are you, God? You know, before my wife got the virus, I'm telling you, Kathy is a godly person. I would get up in the morning to take her to work and every morning she would be on her knees. I'm not lying to you. I'm speaking the truth. She would be praying and calling God. She start her day with God. Let me tell you something. This can happen to anybody. You know that by now. I don't need to convince you. You know, and, and sometimes you want to you ask God, are you going to destroy the, the, the Israelites with the Egyptians? Are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked God? God, God, am I a child of God? I love you. I worship you. I praise you. Why am I going through what I'm going through? How do you explain this to me, God? I went to the east and I can't find I went to the west. I went forward. I went backward. It seemed like you're hiding yourself, like you're concealed. Where are you? Where are you? Are you going to argue with me? Are you going to explain to me? Are you going to tell me why, God? Are you going to, are you going to break it down? I do not see him in the north. He is hidden. I look to the south, but he is concealed. But he know where I am going. Hallelujah. God is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. But he knows the way I'm going. And when he tests me, I will come forth as pure gold. I am telling you. I and Pastor Katian, we just want to serve. We just want to be better people. I know we love people and love God, but we want to take it to the next level. We just thank God. We never had to go to the hospital. We never had to be on a respirator, a ventilator. You know, God is good and God is good all the time. And so, uh, and so Job trusts God. He worshiped God. He praised God. Habakkuk rejoiced. Amen. And he trusted in the Lord. You know what the Bible says? It says um, in 118, Psalms 118 and 8, it is better to put your trust in God than to put confidence in man. It says it's better to put your trust in God than to put confidence in chariots and horses. It's better to put your trust in God than to trust in princesses and man that cannot help you. It is better to trust in the Lord. Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fallen. He shall cover me under His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. We trust in the Lord when you cannot understand the situation. Don't trace him. Trust him. Trust him. I want to pray for us today in the name of the Lord. I want to pray for us today. Like I said, somebody is quarantined right now that I'm speaking to. Somebody knows somebody, a co-worker who died. We as New Yorkers, we are touched by this, man. But God also is a God that is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. And I want to pray. I want to pray. You know, I had, I had an apostle call me from Malawi. My good friends, Prophet Blessing, uh, Prophet uh, uh, Apostle Stanley and Dovey. These are mighty men of God. And they say, Pastor Roas, we are praying for you every single day. The people in Malawi know me. It's like my second home in Africa. And Africans know how to pray. Well, I spoke to Prophet Blessing yesterday. He said, Apostle, we had no coronavirus in the country. 
He said, and guess what? Three days ago, someone came in and bought it in. Now, Malawi is one of the poorest 10 countries in the world. They don't have ventil ventilators a, and, and, and they don't have, they don't have the, the, the health system. As a matter of fact, when people really get sick, they, they go to South Africa. And I, I pray God have mercy. God have mercy on the universe. In these times, everyone is touched. Everyone is affected. And we want to pray. Father, join me today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, oh God, and we plead the blood of Jesus. We pray for America, the strong and the mighty. Oh God, we have been invaded. We have invaded with a vicious enemy, with a merciless enemy. But oh God, today we pray. The Bible said righteousness shall exalt a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said what we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And what we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. We take the authority, O oh God. We use our mouth to decree and declare. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the workers, the first responders, the doctors that needs a mask. Somebody need a ventilator. Somebody, O oh God, right now has a temperature. Somebody is fearful. Somebody don't know what to do. But may I submit to you, the just shall live by faith. And we will still worship God. We will still trust God. We will still depend on God. We will lift up our eyes unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Oh God, we pray for New York. We pray for New Orleans, oh God. And we pray, oh God, for Chicago and Boston and New Jersey, oh God. We pray for Italy and France and Spain. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the entire world. Lord, I pray for ICC family. Keep us safe, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And now as we about, oh God, to feast on the bread and the wine, a powerful symbol May it saturate our very being. And may it kill every virus in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to bring your attention to the scripture right now. I'm going to read the scripture. Amen. And Jesus broke bread with his disciples. It says, I have received of the Lord. Also, I passed unto you on the night which he took bread. When he was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks. And when he had broken it, he said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And so what he did, he took the cup, the new covenant in my blood. This was often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you do eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Uh, brothers and sisters, you know, one of the things we need to learn to do is to be flexible. We're not stiff and starch. You know, Pastor Roas, I learned to be flexible. Folks, I learned to abong, I learned to abase, I learned to be hungry, I learned to be filled. I, 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 I try to adjust. I'm not stiff and starch. I'm not legalistic. I, I, I roll with the punches. I, I trust God in whatever state I am. I, I, I learn how to behave. The Bible said David behaved himself wisely. So if you don't have the bread and the wine, use a cracker. You know, and um, Jesus broke it. You hear that song? He broke it. And then he ate. And then he drank. So today, I want to pray in the name of Jesus. Hopefully, if we had Zoom, I would have Zoomed into the other pastors. Amen. And they would have prayed. And we would have communion together. But in your home... If you don't have wine, you say, Pastor, what do I do? Use water, use juice, use, use grapefruit juice, orange juice, whatever. And use a piece of bread or a piece of cracker. It's a powerful symbol. We're going to commune today. Yes, the times are different. We have to make adjustments. But we'll get through this together in Jesus' name. Can we all eat and be thankful? Can we touch and agree? We in church, we are family church. We like to touch and agree. But at this time, we can't touch. But let's touch our hearts. Let's agree one with the other. There's power in agreement. And even though you're in Trinidad or you are in uh, the Bronx or you are in Manhattan, you can still touch and agree. Let's touch and agree. Let's touch and agree. Somebody touch and agree in Jesus' name. Let's eat and be thankful. Hallelujah. I'm worshiping. I'm rejoicing. Hey, I'm trusting. Hallelujah. 
I'm believing. Corona or no corona, corona can affect us. Let's be real. But we cannot let it take our whole life. We must learn to still love, live, laugh, and give. Hallelujah. I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. After the same manner, he took the cup and he drank. Let's drink. Let's drink and be thankful. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Saturate that very being. Let it flow like a river. Let it flow. 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 Every mucus, every virus, every 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 lung oh god let it flow in the name of jesus hallelujah for the anointing shall break every yoke in jesus name glory to god glory to god glory i feel the presence of god all through the airwaves in the name of jesus thank you lord god bless you this is apostle rojas saying god is good thank you for your prayers we will continue on Monday night to pray again, church. Let's pray as never before. It's a season of prayer. And uh, we also want you to know you can visit our website, International Christian Center. It's I-N-T-L, like International Christian Center, I-N-T-L-C-C-Church.com. And you can send your tithes, your offering. It's a season of living, loving, laughing, and yes, we will not stop giving. God bless you. God bless you. Let's stay in touch. I love you.